Hello and welcome to DJ Tutorials Primers, Understanding Your Computer, Part 3. If you haven't had an opportunity yet, please go back and watch Parts 1 and 2 so that this video makes a little bit more sense to you. The PSU is your power supply unit. It's the component that basically powers everything in your computer through modular cables and is designated by the amount of watts the PSU produces. The PSU you decide to use for your computer should reflect whether or not you plan on expanding what's in your computer or adding things onto it like other GPUs or higher end GPUs or other things like that. You want it to be high quality and you want to make sure that you get an efficient supply of wattage to all of your components, especially because you're going to be running stuff at very high loads when you're doing renders. I'm on the Corsair website here, and these are just examples of PSUs. And if we look at one of these, I'll explain to you why it's called modular. So the power supply unit is this, and then cables are basically fed from here to your components. So if we look at this case build, um, there is the PSU or power supply unit right there. The cables go up into the system and there's a cable right there that's plugged in and sort of behind the scenes, there's some power that's going plugged into the motherboard and everything else that's inside of the system. So that is basically what's meant by a modular um, PSU. And by modular, again, it basically means that it has this setup here. The other item that I will talk about has to do with the efficiency rating. And there's a lot of argument in uh, what efficiency curves are in power supply units. And I don't want to get lost in the weeds here on this whole thing with these. Basically, these certifications where it says 80 watt or uh, it says 750 watt and then it says 80 plus gold certified. What that refers to is this system here which it's basically saying how efficient these power supply units are at different amounts of load. And in general, the higher the rating, so titanium being the you know most expensive metal, and then bronze being the least expensive metal, this is generally speaking going to give you a more efficient uh, supply of power to your components. Now, like I said, there's a lot of argument about the uh, about the efficiency curves and all of this other stuff. So, if you're going to comment on that, please, you know, don't don't bother because, and not that you're not potentially correct. It's just for beginners and understanding kind of what this is. If you get something more in this area, and you're looking at a more you're basically looking at a more decent power supply unit in general. If you're looking more at here or something lower, you may not be looking at a decent power supply unit for what you're trying to do. Now in budget builds, if you're trying to go as low as possible, yes, these will be much cheaper. Anything in this will be a lot cheaper than anything here. But if you want to try and get a very nice build of your computer without running into any potential power issues at certain amounts of load, um, you may want to just go a little bit higher. And if you had the option to go from silver to gold, spend the 20 or 30 extra dollars or something like that to go there. Now, when you start looking at the platinum and the titanium area, they tend to jump in price by quite a bit, sometimes $100 for the same amount of wattage. So you really have to kind of, you know, see what works for you and the amount of money that you have. In general, if you are buying a pre-made computer from a manufacturer, you're going to get a power supply that will most likely, in almost all cases, at a decent, reputable uh, builder, will give you a power supply to match what you need. Now, they probably won't give you something that's going to allow you to expand. So if you have the option to increase the amount of wattage and get something bigger because you plan on expanding or adding another GPU or something like that, by all means, try to get something with a bit more wattage. And if you can, bump up the efficiency rating from a bronze to a silver or a silver to a gold or whatever as much as you can when you're buying a new computer. And especially if you have the option to select different versions or different kinds, you want to make sure that you get a nice brand with a good warranty and has a good efficiency rating.
Your drive is what your system documents, software operating system, and everything that you basically are putting on your computer as far as information is saved to. The most typical drives I'm going to go over are HDDs or hard disk drives, SATA SSD or solid state drives with a SATA cable that connects them, and an NVMe solid state drive. Drive sizes are generally referred to today in terms of gigabytes and terabytes, where 1,000 gigabytes is equal to 1 terabyte. If you look at these products on this page, and I'm on Newegg right now, and I just went into a you know basic uh, drive sort of search, there's all sorts of different forms of these drives. And you'll see here there's a 480 gigs of uh, space on this one. This has 1.2 terabytes, meaning it has 1,200 gigabytes. So one terabyte is equal to 1,000 gigabytes. Uh, you can see this one right here, it does it say 960 gigabytes. And this one right here has 128 gigabytes. So there are ranging amounts of space that are on each of these and they all look a bit different. So the first one that we're gonna be talking about is probably the most common and in a computer that you probably have, if it's an older one especially, has this in it. Now this is open, so uh, normally it would look something like this here, where it's just kind of this metal box and you don't see the drive just sort of naked there. Or if we look at these here, uh, they'll look like this. and Basically what this means is it's a hard disk drive. So it, it's actually a mechanical drive where this, these little uh, readers here go on and it writes, rewrites, and reads data from these disks. So um, these were newer to an older form of this and it uses a SATA connection, which is this section right down here. Um, and it basically plugs power and the information into your motherboard so that you can actually understand what the disks are reading. As a drive for your operating system and your uh, software, I would not recommend it compared to other ones because newer technology is just faster. But as far as a storage drive for older projects or for archiving, these are excellent because the price is so cheap. I strongly recommend that you have at least one storage drive and most likely it's going to be something like this. And they run at different speeds, usually in what's called RPMs. And you'll see right here, there's some different things here for performance where they're not telling you how fast it runs, but see right here, it says 7,200 RPM. So that's kind of fast for these hard disk drives, but for running stuff nowadays, there are other options. Now the next one that we're gonna talk about, well actually, before we go to the next one, let's actually look at uh, this is a 2017, and this is from Wikipedia. Uh, this is a 2017 build of a computer. So it's kind of older, but you can see some of the components we've already been talking about. You have your power supply up here that's running your cables down. You have your RAM sticks put into the motherboard here. And then down here, you actually have a GPU that's, pl that's uh, plugged in here. It's an older model. And then here, you can see the hard disk that's uh, put in a rack system here, and that is the SATA cable that runs out and into the motherboard and the cable that runs from the power supply into your hard disk drive. So that is how that works. Now the next thing that we're gonna talk about is a SATA SSD or solid state drive. And this is basically what they look like. Um, Samsung, I don't really, I'm not really telling you what to buy or anything like that in this tutorial or uh, informational video. Uh, but in general, Samsung does have really, really nice uh, storage drives and solid state drives. So this is just one of them. And if we look at a different view, let's see if we can make it bigger here. You can see right here, that is where the input and the uh, output for power and the SATA cables go right here, which is pretty much exactly the same as a hard disk drive. It's just done differently because this does not use a mechanical system and disks to read and write data. It uh, uses a different system. I'm not gonna go into how it works. There you can see, let's see if we can zoom in a bit more here. Here you can see where the SATA cables will connect. 
And uh, these are just faster, much, much faster than the older hard disk drives. But you're looking at a difference in price by, you know, sometimes a few hundred dollars for the same amount of gigabytes. So if we look here, this one is $214.99 for 960 gigabytes. It's not even a terabyte of data. Whereas you can get a hard disk drive that has 7,200 RPMs with uh, even two terabytes for less than $100. Main takeaway, a lot faster for these SATA solid state drives as far as reading and writing and you are going to pay a little bit more. The last one that I'm going to talk about is actually visible in this image here. And if we zoom in a little bit, you'll see this little guy right here, and it says Corsair MP500. And that right there is an NVMe solid state drive. And as you can see, it's far different. It's very, very different from the solid state drive that we were just looking at here. This is like this big box in comparison to this little tiny uh, chip right here that's inserted directly into your motherboard. So these, because they're so close to the motherboard, they are much faster at reading and writing. And it is the ideal solid state drive that you want to get for what we're going to be doing. If you can get a computer for the price that you can pay that has an NVMe solid state drive and it has to say in the description of the computer that it's an NVMe solid state drive then that's what you want to get for your software your operating system all of that kind of stuff that is what you want to get then if you can get an additional set of space with a hard disk drive, let's say two terabytes to put on older files, that's what you want to get. The NVMEs are a lot faster and they are also more expensive. So when you're comparing the differences between certain uh, NVMe drives and other solid state drives, just keep that in mind and don't be blown away by the prices. But there are some really, really inexpensive ones out there like this Western Digital Blue. It's not as fast as something like the 970 Evo, but this is what a lot of companies are using nowadays to put in their pre-built because they're so cheap and they have a very, very nice read and write speed for the price. So when you're looking around at your computer build and you're researching what you decide to buy, make sure to check if it has an NVMe drive uh, for your uh, software and your operating system and check out how big it is because you do want to have a decent size for your software because we are going to be using quite a bit of software and we're going to be reading and writing a lot on these uh, drives for our projects. The motherboard aka the MOBO in technical lingo is the component that every other component is linked to and that pretty much makes it the most important piece of technology in our computer. I'm not going to get too detailed into the CPU pairing to the different types of motherboards. You can see here that we have one that's called a B450. The uh, type is the Tomahawk Max. This is from the MSI uh, line of motherboards, and it's one of many of this particular type the B450 of motherboard. And this is more geared towards the newer AMD CPUs. Then we also have, this is from MSI as well, the uh, MPGZ390, which has to do with the Intel uh, newest model chips. And uh, as you can see, they're pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is the socket right here is going to be different. There's, there's a lot of other features and things like that that are different, different capacitors and all that sort of stuff. But really, in general, if you're going between motherboards, it really just depends on the CPU that you're getting and seeing what kind of features that particular motherboard is coming with on whether or not you want to go with that one. And really, if you're building your own computer or you're selecting specific parts, you're going to need to do more research. I'm not going to be able to go over all the details with you on every single item on what you may need for the type of build that you're looking to do. But I'm going to tell everybody basically how everything fits together. Now this one right here, uh, going back to it, is the B450 Tomahawk. Uh, and it's, you know, just a average sort of looking motherboard that you can expect to see. 
And uh, if you look here in the center, that's where your CPU goes. Over here is where the RAM sticks will go. Then you have your 16 pin PCIe slots. And what that is, that's basically where your GPU is gonna go. It will be in this top one here, uh, most likely. You, they usually won't use this lower one because the top one is usually the one with the, the most amount of CPU lanes going to it. And this one has a metal sort of like reinforcement so that the GPU can sit in there nicely. There's also these other uh, PCIe slots here for things like audio cards or extra solid state drives that you can plug in here. And in the bottom here, we do have another 16 pin for something like a another GPU or perhaps a 16 pin peripheral that you might find. The other thing we have right here is indicated by this nine. I kind of don't like this because it covers up a lot of the kind of the like electrical work behind it so you can't really see what it looks like but this is where your nvme drive would end up getting plugged in right in here you also have right here the uh place where your peripherals will be plugged in so you have uh it looks like this is made for an integrated uh gpu because you see an hdmi export here and there's also a dv cable for a monitor right here there's usb cable inputs and you have audio jacks and anything else that you're gonna need for the extra peripherals like your keyboard right in there. Also on this side over here is where your SATA cables will be plugged in. So when the hard drives or solid state drives that use a SATA connection are plugged in, they end up going in these little sockets over here. And I'm gonna show you another motherboard that's a little bit easier to see this stuff and one that I know fairly well because I have it. Um, but this is just one version uh, for a motherboard. Uh, here is a Z390, which basically uses the Intel chip. And same thing here. The layout is practically identical. There's a couple other things in here, but it's mostly the same. There's a couple other things like extra SATA connections here. You have another of these smaller pinned uh, PCIe expansion slots down in here. But it, it has a metal reinforced GPU 16 pin slot here. And then there's a second slot here for a second GPU if you're doing that. You have your peripherals here on the left, uh, CPU socket and your RAM sticks would go right in here. So again, pretty much the, the same thing. But one thing that I'll point out is that you really need to make sure that you're checking for when you're buying your PC or if you're buying these components is to check for a Wi-Fi connection. Now standard, all of these are pretty much going to have a Ethernet input, which is right there. And then on the 450, there's an input right there. But none of these say Wi-Fi. So because it doesn't say Wi-Fi, and if you needed Wi-Fi, you would have to get a different sort of peripheral either to plug in here or something that can stick in the back, something like that to get it to where you can run your Wi-Fi connection to your internet. Um, so if you're running everything off of a Wi-Fi signal, which I don't recommend for doing uploads or gaming or whatever, but uh, if that's just your situation that you're in and you need to use Wi-Fi, these motherboards do not come with them integrated. So you need to check your computer that you're going to buy to make sure that it has it or if you're buying the components themselves or selecting them from a set of components from a manufacturer that you can choose specific things that you want, make sure that it says Wi-Fi if you need Wi-Fi. And if we look over here at the TS, uh, the TRX-40 uh, ASRock, this is actually the motherboard that I have, you can see that it's quite a bit different. The CPU slot is much larger than the others. See how, how big that is compared to this one here. So, I mean, that just makes sense because the Threadripper that I have is a much larger uh, CPU than the others, but basically the overall layout's the same. I have eight RAM slots on uh, this board, so four on each side. I have four GPU slots, and these are all dual slotted. They're, they're not triple. Some, some are triple where you get a lot more room, but these are dual, so you can fit a, a a large card in here, and you can fit four of them. Now underneath here, these uh, where it says M.2 Armor, in there is where the NVMe SSD will get s slotted in. So you remove this covering thing here, you stick it in there, and you have three of those slots. 
And if we go to another view here, you can see that there's uh, the peripherals are here. So you have, um, don't worry about the BIOS flash, that's a more complex thing that I don't really want to go into. But right here, there's a Wi-Fi that uh, you plug these little antennae in and you have a Wi-Fi integrated into your motherboard. Uh, the next thing you have here is you have uh, these uh, LAN connections here and you have USB uh, inputs here for your peripherals as well as the audio and other jacks that you may need. The last thing that I'll point out over here on the right, that's where all of the SATA connections are. So there's two, four, six, eight, I think. Yeah, I think there's like eight connections that you can um, use for the SATA connections for a lot of space. Something to remember in all this, we are living in a quickly changing technological world and you will never really be on the cutting edge. As this video is released, most likely there will already be changes in some of the components and likely as soon as you buy a brand new computer, the technology will already be old. That's it for this video and I hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about what makes your computer work. You will now be much more prepared when searching for a computer since you have some idea about how the parts relate to you making digital artwork. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos and be sure to hit the little bell to notify you when new videos have been released. Join me next time as I discuss the differences between desktop or tower computers and a laptop or tablet, the Apple versus PC controversy, and my suggestions on the builds I recommend for beginners.